let's get this party started then. Thank you for subscribing to Mancinelli's Math Lab. Uh, I just want to cover this example uh, regarding exam FM. So topic is financial ma uh, mathematics. Uh, here are the preliminary details. Um, we have a loan. It is known that there are end of the year payments, 16 of them, so for 16 years. And for the first eight payments, uh, the payments are 100, after which the payments go up to 300. Um, L is gonna represent the loan amount for obvious reasons, I hope. Um, we're also given one other piece of information, that is the outstanding balance at year one is the loan amount plus 25. And actually before I forget, we're given another piece of information. Uh, that is, um, we're also given that one over one plus I to the eight is greater than 0 0.3, right? Yeah, that's what we're given. So um, you should be thinking, well, we're looking for the outstanding balance uh, at the end of eight years. So just after um, the last payment of 100 is made, okay? Um, right here, just to point something out, here you should be thinking that this says that V to the eight is greater than 0 0.3. That is exactly what that's saying. So, we want to know what is the outstanding balance after year eight. So let's go through this. Um, first thing I'm going to do is write down the loan, the loan itself. I'm going to write it two different ways um, because depending on the information given, you may have to think about which way is more useful. So one way to write the loan amount, probably the most straightforward way in my opinion would be the following. The loan L is equal to I'm just going to discount these eight payments. So this is an annuity immediate back to time zero. So we do that by saying this is 100, A8, some inter interest rate I, um, and this just gives me those the present value of those payments. Now I need to add that to um, the value, the present value of these eight payments. Payments nine at time a year nine through year 16. I need to bring those back to time zero. So I'm just going to immediately write the discount of eight. Okay, let me write it down and I'll explain what I mean. And now times 300 and then a sub eight, a angle eight with some interest rate i. Now, hopefully you're convinced that this actually works. Um, the idea with this second term here is that I'm bringing these eight payments of 300 back to time eight, but then I discount them back to time zero. This brings the eight payments of 300, this part right here brings the eight payments of 300 to time eight. This brings them back to time zero. So hopefully this is clear. This in my opinion would be the most straightforward way uh, to finding the loan amount. This would be sort of how I would approach it when I was first learning the material. There is another way, and for other uh, people out there, you may say, well, there's even more ways than this. I'm sure there are, but another useful way is the following. We could also say um, L is equal to, uh, if you've been doing your studying, hopefully you came across this, I guess you call it a trick. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to discount, I'm going to assume that all the payments are 300, the larger one. And this is specific to find the present value. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all, of, pretend they're all 300, then I'm going to subtract payments of 200 for the first eight years. I'm not going to go through the details as to really why this works, but I hope that you can convince yourself that this works. So this is also equal to 300 a 16 with some interest rate I, that annual effective rate, that would be if the payments were level at $300. But they're not. 
uh, actually the first eight years are only a hundred. So what I need to do here, I think you subtract 200 a angle eight. Again, I don't really want to go through the details as to why this works for this video, but uh, I urge you to convince yourself that these two things are equivalent. I mean, even algebraically shouldn't be too bad. You may have to do something clever, but show that these are the same. Why would I do this? First of all, well, the main reason is that uh, beforehand, a lot of times you don't really know what the more useful approach is. Um, in this particular case here, I'm going to go with this. So I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to use this one. Now there could be instances where it doesn't really matter, um, but hopefully as you'll see, um, it's more, I think, efficient to use this way, the second way. So that's what I'll leave up there. And now we need to use the other details given, okay? All right, all right. Let me just erase this so that I have more room. I will write that down here momentarily again because we will need to use that. Now, how can I deal with um, this information here? The balance, the outstanding balance after the first payment of 100 is the loan amount plus 25. Um, I've made a previous video um, regarding just various formulas for a loan. And um, the idea, one of the ideas you need to understand with regards to loans is whether you want to compute um, various amounts using the retrospective method versus the prospective method. method. So we have a choice here. What, do I want to compute the outstanding balance using the prospective mes method? Meaning, do I want to use everything in the future, the prospective information, to calculate the loan balance or instead, would it be more convenient to use the past, the information from the past, to compute uh, the outstanding balance uh, at year one? So past is retrospective. Using the future would be prospective. Hopefully you can see, I mean, just looking at my time diagram, that using the retrospective method here will be much just cleaner. So that's what I'll do. So um, what is the outstanding balance uh, after the first payment? So the outstanding balance uh, after the first payment is equal to, all right, well, we made a loan at time zero. And so that loan is made and it accumulates with some interest rate I, but then immediately we pay off $100. So if you think about it for a second, this is exactly the outstanding balance after year one. We take out a loan, it accumulates for one period, in this case one year, and then we make a payment at time one uh, of $100. So this is the outstanding balance after year one, and we're given that this is equal to L plus 25. So this is nice because we have an equation, and this immediately implies, I can distribute the L and then cancel the Ls, right? This says that Li minus 100 is equal to 25, which is equivalent to saying that I L is equal to 125. Um, another way of saying this is that, uh, let me write it this way, is that L is equal to 125 divided by I. So that looks good. That looks good. Um, immediately, you may not know exactly what to do with this information. Um, but if you recall, we have a representation for L. We just wrote that down previously, the loan amount. So let me use that information along with this information here. So let's gather our details. Let's write an equation to help us find what we're looking for. This is the equation we have. We have the following. We have that the loan amount, which is 125, uh, over I is equal to the loan amount I wrote down previously. What was that? That was um, 300 A18. I'm going to omit the I here, the interest rate for now, minus 200 A8. So if you recall, this was the loan amount, right? 
This was exactly the loan amount. This is the loan itself. And we just discovered using the information regarding the outstanding balance after year one, that this is also the loan amount. So the loan amount, of course, equals the loan amount. No big deal. Now I claim that we can do something uh, here. Let me use the definition of my annuity immediates. This tells me that I have the following. 125 um, divided by I, I'll just write it out, is equal to 300 uh, times one minus V to, uh, sorry, it's not 18, is it? It's 16. This is actually a six. Sorry if you're getting frustrated there. So 16 uh, over I minus 200, one minus V to the eight over I. Clearly you can say to yourself that the I's cancel which gives me the following equation. Now I have 125 is equal to 300 times one minus V to the 16 minus 200, one minus V to the eight. At this stage, it should not be too far fetched. It should not be um, really too difficult for you to realize that this is like a quadratic equation. And there are air quotes there. This is like a quadratic. Um, this is like a quadratic in the sort of unknown v to the 8, right? v to the 8 is a term. i is unknown, so this is an unknown. And v to the 16 is v to the 8 squared. This is like a quadratic. Uh, let me write it like a quadratic. Okay, so this tells me, uh, I prefer to put the leading term, um, make it positive. So this is equal to um, 300 V to the 16. Okay, uh, what will I have in terms of the V to the eight piece? Uh, well, it's gonna be in fact, uh, minus 200 V to the eight. And do some algebra here. You have uh, the constant term is 125, and then you have 300 minus 200, which is 100. So this is going to be plus 25 is equal to zero. Um, now we need to do the quadratic formula. Do the quadratic formula. It's not too bad. This says that V to the eight is equal to negative B, so 200, um, plus or minus the square root of 200 squared, so 200 squared minus four times A times C all over two A, which is nothing fancy. I mean, I don't know why I'm writing this. Am I assaulting your, your intelligence? I hope, I hope I am, right? If you're watching this video, quadratic form is old news. It's just easy peasy. Now, what do you get for V8? V8 is equal to uh, the following. It's either equal to, when you solve this, both of these values end up being positive. Uh, sorry, you get either 1 sixth or you get V8 equals a half. Now you should be saying, oh, there is a reason why they gave me this information here. We're given that the discount factor V raised to the eighth power is greater than 0.3, which immediately says this one is no good. So this is the one we want. We want to use the fact uh, that V to the eight is 0.5 or a half. And of course, this will give me what I is. All right, so let me give myself some more room so we can answer this question. All right. All right, so let's erase this. So hopefully this is making sense to you so far. Now that I have um, the value of V to the eight, this will allow me to find I quite easily. There are different ways to go about this, but uh, what I'll say here is the following. So V to the eight is equal to a half. So how do I find I? Just use the definition of V to the eight. 
I've done this so many times that I don't have to think too much about it. That's where you want to be when you're preparing for this exam. It just needs to be automatic. How do I find I here? Remember, V to the A is this definition here. So just do some algebra. Not too big a deal. I is equal to 1 half raised to the negative 1 over 8 minus 1. Just do the algebra. It's not a big deal. Uh, this tells me now, I believe what I got was I is 0 0.0905. I should probably have an approximation there, but whatever. Now what I want to do is answer the question. I'm ready to answer the question. So remember, we're after the outstanding balance after uh, the eighth year. And they actually say after the last payment of um, 100. So we're looking for the present value right, right after that last payment of 100. And Again, this is an instance where you want to ask yourself, do you want to find the outstanding balance using the prospective or the retrospective method? In this case, in my opinion, it's easier to find the outstanding balance in year eight using the prospective method. Uh, here is what I mean. So the outstanding balance in year eight I claim is equal to the following. It's equal to 300 times uh, the annuity immediate with eight payments uh, at interest rate 9.05%. Why is this true? Hopefully this is obvious to you. Just think to yourself, how much do you owe after the eighth payment of 100? Well, you owe the remaining payments. If I paid all of these, right, everything would be paid off, the loan would be done. So after the eighth payment of 100, I owe this much. How much is that worth? Well, it's equal to, it's worth the present value at year eight. So that should be clear, I hope. Now, some of you may say you don't need the um, BA2 plus for this. You absolutely do not. You don't need the BA2 plus. However, I'm going to show you how to do it because there are problems where it is useful to know how to use it properly and actually just all said and done, you just need to know how to use it properly for this exam, just in my opinion. You can easily do it without it, easily, very easily. In fact, I mean, you should be saying uh, that this is equal to, I mean, V to the A to the half, right? So this is really equal to 300 times uh, a half divided by 0 0.0905, right? So I'm gonna go through that, I mean, convince yourself exactly what it is but using this I'm telling you I was hesitant but you should get one of these for this exam I definitely know how to use this how would I compute this is quite simple really um, we're doing an immediate so you, you need to be in end mode it is defaulted to end mode so on the BA2 plus Uh, what are the keystrokes? Um, I guess I'll just go through it. So make sure uh, you're in N mode. And I always clear, always clear the time value of money. Um, second, clear TMV, all, uh, TVM, I should say. Always clear that uh, to make sure you're not going to use any previous values. I'm just going to do this in order in order from left to right. So the first thing I have is that the payment is 300. And then what I need actually for the payment is the plus or minus key. So 300 plus or minus payment. Okay, that takes care of the 300. Uh, the next thing I want is um, the eight. So eight, and then you need to hit the N key. That's the number of payments you're making. Uh, or in this case, well, annual payments, right? Now I need the interest rate, which is 9.05%. Uh, and notice I'm putting it in as a percentage. So here this is I over Y. Interest rate per year, although it doesn't have to be years actually. And what are we looking for? We're looking to compute, we want to compute actually um, PV. 
And this should give you, let me just do it real quick. Okay, so 300, uh, and then uh, we need plus or minus, we need the minus, and then this is the payment, and then 8N, and then 9.05I, and then compute uh, present value is 16, five seven point three um, I guess you may have to round up a little um, I got a different answer when I left this as nine percent so sixteen point sixteen five seven point three six one of the annoying things about this exam in my opinion is just where to round your answers allegedly you're okay if you keep things at four decimal places Notice I have mine at four decimal places. Um, but yeah, bottom line, you should get about 1660. So that takes care of it. Hope it was helpful. And uh, tell me what you think.